I'm sure we all have an appreciation for music. In fact, music is said to increase happiness, decrease stress, and overall improve your health. That's only for certain types of music though. Cause uh, screamo music definitely does not relax me. Hey, hi, hello, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10 and welcome to today's video. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 scary messages hidden in songs. Now, there are tons of songs out there that have sparked a lot of controversy. From backmasking to subliminal messages to the backstories of songs, I will be discussing it all. And of course, I will have all these videos linked down below so you can hear these spooky messages for yourself. Starting off this video, we have Every Breath You Take by The Police. Honestly, I'm a big fan of The Police and Sting. Some of my favorite songs are Roxanne and Message in a Bottle, you know, the classics. So anyway, I'm sure you've heard of the song Every Breath You Take. Now honestly, I never thought too much of the song, I just thought it was a cute romance song. Well, turns out it is quite the opposite. Apparently Sting wrote the song after a bad breakup. So now if you listen to the song, keeping that in mind, it sounds like he's just stalking his ex. Like, just listen to these lyrics. Every breath you take and every move you make, I'll be watching you. Every single day and every word you say, he'll be watching you. Like, now that's really creepy. So maybe think twice before playing that song at your wedding. Just a suggestion. Moving on at number nine, we have Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. That's right, folks. Our childhood nursery rhyme is much darker than you thought. So if you play the line, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, How I Wonder What You Are, Backwards, it sounds like I wish there was no Allah. Allah in Arabic means God. So parents believe that it was going to cause their child to become an atheist or even a devil worshiper. Now, this can only be heard in some versions of the song, and even then, it still sounds a bit distorted, so I personally don't believe that was put there intentionally. But seriously, who discovered this? Are there just people spending their days listening to songs backwards trying to spark some kind of controversy? Next up at number eight, we have the song Eunuch Provocateur by Mars Volta. Now the name of the song alone is pretty disturbing, honestly. And yeah, it's not like a positive, uplifting pop song, so what do you expect? Now, towards the beginning of the song, in between an instrumental break, you can hear some sort of distorted voice. When played in reverse, it sounds like someone saying, did mommy and dad ever hurt or spank you. I have no clue why they incorporated this in the song. Maybe it was just like to hop on the back masking trend or maybe it truly does have a darker meaning. In our seventh spot, we have the song Fire on High by Electric Light Orchestra. Now, orchestra music is not typically that scary, but this song contained quite a creepy message. So at the beginning of the song, there appears to be some sort of gibberish. People detected that it was a message and played it backwards. That's when they revealed that it said, music is reversible, but time is not. Turn back, turn back, turn back. The voice itself is very deep and heavy, giving it a creepier tone. Now, people tried to decipher this message. Some people think that he is warning about impending doom. And of course, you have the people that think everything is satanic. Well, parents were fearful because this soundtrack was used as the opening theme for CBS Sports and even at a ride at Seabreeze Amusement Park. Although it's creepy and we don't really know the exact meaning, I doubt we have anything to worry about, right? Moving on to number six, we have 123 Red Light by 1910 Fruit Gum Company. Honestly, this song is said to be a classic childhood song for a bunch of individuals around the 1970s. Many people listened to this song and focused on the snazzy tune or catchy repetition of the line 123 Red Light. But apparently this song has an underlying message about date rape. What's scary is how this song was specifically targeted towards children and young teens. It is not a good song that they should be listening to at such a young age, especially when they are still developing and can easily be influenced. So when you listen to the lyrics, it says things like, every time Time I try to prove I love you, one, two, three, red light, you stop me. Baby, you ain't right to stop me. Then it also says, one, two, three, red light, won't stop me. When I know I'm right, don't stop me, one, two, three, red light. That makes me feel so sick. Like, literally, he's singing about trying to pursue a woman who doesn't want to engage in sexual activities. Even though she's rejecting him, he still won't stop because he thinks he's right and she's wrong for doing so. 
We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen. Now this song is fairly heavy. The emotion in Springsteen's voice is very powerful, it's honestly beautifully sung. But unfortunately, what some people may not know is that it is actually about a serial killer by the name of Charlie Starkweather. When Charlie was just 19, he killed 11 people in Nebraska and Wyoming. There was no motive, it was just a relentless killing spree. The song has lyrics like, me and her went for a ride sir, and 10 innocent people died. And through to the badlands of Wyoming, I killed everything in my path. This is all true to what Charlie did. Suddenly, the harmonica moments in the song just sound a bit more creepier than normal. It's a very sad song once you listen to it with that in mind. Moving on, in our fourth spot, we have Dinner at the Deviant's Palace by Cradle of Filth. I mean, again, what did you expect? They're an extreme heavy metal band. And I've said that they're inspired by gothic mythology, books, and horror films. They even wear upside down crosses. So I'm not surprised by this dark message hidden in their song. So this interesting song is the eighth track from their album, Bittersweets to Succubi. So in the song, when it's played in reverse, you can hear a young boy reciting the Lord's Prayer. The young boy's voice is eerie with like a static effect over it. It sounds almost like he's possessed. Now, apparently, when a Lord's Prayer is recited backwards, it can be used to summon demons. So maybe be careful next time you choose to listen to this song, uh, you might receive more than you bargained for. In our third spot, we have Hate Your State by Choking Victim. Now, Choking Victim is a punk rock band with songs like Born to Die, No Gods, and In My Grave. So obviously their music is going to be more darker and involve more mature subject matter. Now in their song, Hate Your State, there is a whole secret paragraph that they included. This message is inserted at the beginning of the song and at first just sounds like the singer is struggling to speak as if he's choking. So some people just overlooked it thinking it was an artistic choice. However, other individuals knew that a message was hidden there so when played backwards it says, you think you are alive. MF, you're just the walking effing dead. You're stepping on my back to stay alive. West Coast, East Coast, you're all a bunch of effing fools. Then it tells the listener to kill themselves and hail Satan. But then it ends with him saying, good night boys and girls, pleasant dreams. So I guess that's sweet, I don't know. But seriously, I know they're a more hardcore band, but that message is a little too scary. At number two, we have Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. Now, believe me, when this one is played in reverse, it uh, sounds more like it should have been titled Stairway to Hell. Now, this song in particular is different from the rest. It is shown that the whole thing in reverse has tons of hidden messages, not just one line, the whole song. So throughout the reverse version of the song, you can hear him say things like, here's to my sweet Satan, or all my life will end for him, or even, Oh, I will never be saved because I lived with Satan. And this isn't the first time Led Zeppelin has been accused of backmasking dark messages. Now, in the forward version of the song, he even says the line, cause you know, sometimes words have two meanings. This is what led people to believe there was a hidden message in the song. So some individuals believe that he is trying to recruit people into Satanism. What supported their theory is that the guitarist Jimmy Page bought a home from Aleister Crawley. Now Aleister is known to try and have his followers learn to read and speak backwards. Coincidence? But either way, the satanic messages are pretty creepy. And in our number one spot, we have Big Hoops by Nelly Furtado. Now, Nelly Furtado is a Portuguese Canadian singer songwriter known for her songs like I'm Like a Bird and Turn Off the Light. Now, she isn't one to typically spark controversy, but this next song has people thinking that she's part of the Illuminati. Now, towards the end of her song, Big Hoops, you hear her say, It's not over yet and then some inaudible sounds. It seemed like nothing big until it was played backwards. That's when you can clearly hear her say, oh my god, descending to the 13th floor. We're on the 11th floor, descending to the 12th floor, and then it repeats. There is something about this one that just makes me feel so uncomfortable. Like her voice is just so eerie in it. There's just something so off about it and her voice just gives me the goosebumps. Now, 13th floors are thought to be unlucky and most buildings don't even have a 13th floor. And then throughout the music video, she does the Illuminati symbol. She makes a triangle with her fingers and places it to her eye. She does this multiple times throughout the video. So people believe that she sold her soul to the Illuminati or that she's involved with them somehow. People furthered this theory by even adding up all the numbers she said and doing more research. Then they came to the conclusion that it all added up to 666, the devil's number. 
Now, that one is kind of reaching. Like, I too could make up some bogus math equation like, oh, she has two eyes and she's wearing four bracelets, so that makes six and her favorite number is six. So you see, like, I could just make it up too. So that probably just was a coincidence. But the reverse message just really creeps me out. And that's it for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from my video, Top 10 Scary Things Kids Have Said Part 2. La Plaga commented, the guy in the red jacket is just Cemetery Santa Claus. Hey, I never thought of it like that. I mean, I wish it would just be much less creepier that way. Emma G commented, nice video girl. Do you have any kids? And have they freaked you out in any way or with what you've said? Uh, do I have kids? How old do you think I am? I mean, there's nothing wrong with having kids young, but uh, no, no kids, no kids. Sheena Lee commented, I had a little kitchenette when I was a kid. Well, aren't you super lucky? I always wanted one so badly. And that's it for today's video. As always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below something in order to be featured in my next comment shout out. And don't forget to subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you. Starting off this video, we have every bet. Well, parents were fearful because this soundtrack was used as the opening theme for CBCS. CBS? What did I say? CBCS? I think CBCS. <laughs> I think I added another scene there. Well, parents were fee fearful. Yep. It is a very sad song once you listen back on. The young boy's voice is eerie with like a static effect. Oh my gosh. Coincidence? Honestly, probably, but either way, the satanic message. But either way, the satan. But either way, the sat satanic.